Hey, Hickok here. We're gonna do a range tour here. It's a pretty day, blue skies, and uh, a little brisk. Feels great. Uh, sitting here by my old 45 caliber uh, car pumpkin, which uh, I'm sure most of you saw in my other pumpkin carving video. But I'm gonna jump up here, and we're gonna take you on a little tour, beginning here at about the furthest point we generally shoot from. You recall, if you've seen my 230 yard uh, target uh, shots and videos and things, uh, this is the spot. Uh, shot from here to the sidewalk. And you can see the 230, I think it's actually a little bit further than that, but it's uh, say 230, 240 yards across the, the second hill over there. And from here, it's not really clear, you know, where it is exactly. I know, uh, especially when we zoom in on it. So we're going to do a little walk again and kind of give you a better idea of the range. So just follow me on down here. My son, the cameraman, is going to just kind of crunch the leaves right behind me. And we're going to give you a good feel for how the range is laid out here. Come on, Jim, you can go with us. Come on, boy, you can go with us. That's a good dog. That's a good dog. That's a good dog. So this is one of our closest targets here. Now, we don't shoot this with anything uh, really powerful because it's not that far away. But uh, with soft lead and things sometimes. And again, one of the important things, one of the questions I get a lot of about the targets are, uh, uh, you know, do we get ricochets, of course. And uh, you get a little bit of splatter occasionally, not, not very much. That's why you wear glasses. The thing that exaggerates it occasionally or that enables you to even see it. Now, in most cases, in most shooting ranges, it's gravel, so you don't see it. Well, we have leaves here, and so if a little piece hits somewhere, you know, it's, it's visible. You can see that leaf move in the video. So you wear glasses and it's okay. But if, you're, if your targets are hardened steel, this thing is armor plate. I mean, it's hard. It's been shot, oh man, has it been shot a lot in the last, uh, I guess I've had this six or seven, eight years. And there's not even a dimple in it, except the paint. I mean, the paint's been, been repainted and the paint's knocked off, but that thing is hard. So when uh, lead hits it, it just goes down to the ground. Okay, so it's important to have hard lead, uh, perfectly flat or hard lead, hard steel, perfectly flat and not have edges on your targets. And we'll talk more about that as we move on through. For example, these targets here, you see me shoot a lot. These are hardened steel as well. And so it's, uh, it's especially good if they're swinging like this. But when something hits that, it ends up right down there in the ground. It splashes right down in the ground. The lead does. It's like throwing a water balloon at it. Same for these. Where they give. Now, these are not hardened steel. If you look closely, you can maybe see some little craters, uh, but not too much. The fact that it uh, swings, you know, takes care of that. I used to use just plates, and I uh, throw in some line. Here's one lying around here. This is what I started out with, plates like this, and we would just knock them off. But uh, first generation, the plates were down on the pedestal. And sometimes you would get lead if you hit right here, something might come across that base and come back a little bit. So I had the bright idea to put them on a stem like this. And then it was rare you got anything back unless maybe you hit down here. Well, this is the next generation. That's a lot better. So these work, but uh, those are a lot safer. All right. And of course, these big ones. These are three quarters inch steel. Now, if you get much thicker than three quarters of an inch, uh, no, excuse me. This is three eighths, three eighths. Three eighths is kind of a standard. I think just about everything right there you're seeing and, and all these are three eighths. Quarter inch steel tends to bend. And uh, if it's really hardened steel, it's more likely to, to break eventually from being brittle if it's, uh, but I mean, it would last pretty well if it's hardened steel, armor plate, I guess, even at a quarter inch. But three eighths is, uh, is hard to beat. You get up to a half inch and thicker and you don't get much sound out of it. Move on down, down into the ravine. See the old buffalo over there. A big tombstone. This one, uh, we're getting close to 50 yards here on these. And uh, that's just a nice big old target, fun to shoot at. One of the things about shooting a pistol uh, and one of the nice things about having your own range, I forget that most people's orientation is 
uh, accuracy of a particular gun, rifle, pistol, or anything, and they're constantly talking about how accurate this gun is. It's more accurate than that gun, and uh, I think it's because they go to public ranges. Most people have to. And what do you do at a public range? You don't have steel targets generally to, to plink at. You can't even take a tin can to shoot. So you shoot at paper target and you measure your groups. So everybody is kind of preoccupied with what kind of group you can get with a particular gun. That's really not an interest of mine at all. Uh, I just like to shoot targets of all sizes, uh, steel targets. And uh, one of the nice things about this, like in the cowboy matches, having some big targets. You know, and if you've ever been to a cowboy action shooting match, they have a lot of large targets. And uh, that's what makes it fun, you know. Even if you can pick off a flea at 100 yards, it's still a lot of fun just banging big targets and hitting most of the time. You know what I mean? Why throw lead and waste lead? Hit the targets most of the time. Use big targets. Have some small ones that are kind of fun as a challenge occasionally. But just hit the targets. That's why you're shooting. Uh, so, anyway, those seem kind of large, but... That's kind of fun, and it, it, it's easy to miss at 50 yards. <laughs> That's probably 45. I think this first bank right here is about 50 right here. Nice plate there. Again, you've got a target that uh, that's going to move on you, so when you hit that, it just definitely splatters out towards the ground. Swinging targets are great. I've had a lot of people uh, message me about setting up their own range and being recommendations, and that's one of my first recommendations is uh, get swinging targets, Get hard steel if you can, armor plate, it's more expensive, but that thing would last longer than I do. I mean, that will outlast me unless I start shooting uh, high-powered rifle rounds at it all the time, full metal jacket or something. Plan hangers, or excuse me, target hangers, they work great. You pick those up at Walmart or about anywhere, you slip them right on there. I get these at uh, uh, arntzentargets.com. Uh, I don't have any <laughs> an agreement with them or anything, but I've... In the last, I guess, eight or ten years, most of the targets I've uh, bought, not had made locally, I've gotten from him. And he does a pretty good job. These are, uh, you've seen these hit, these are just uh, regular steel, but let's slide down that when you hit their eight inch plates. Bang the other one. Generally a 22 or anything will activate that. Got our little 22 targets here, a little swinging gopher. And then the pigs, rams, and all that. Now these guys, I don't know if you, we've ever given you real close up on these things. Now these, these are, uh, some of these are about half an inch. These are pretty heavy. These pigs, uh, they weigh something, I'll tell you. You can tell. And uh, sometimes that's why they're hard to knock over. They just have a lot of weight. The rams are three eighths inch, but you know, they're really big and uh, weigh a lot. So, and they got big feet. So, you know, they'll rock on you. So you can hit that thing pretty hard you know he might not fall over same for the turkey and we move on up here you know the plate buffalo all these are rigged up to, to last you know so i've got a fence post here to help support that if you uh set something like this up on your property uh some people have uh, again messaged me to to get advice these plant hangers work great if you uh if you hang a target that's got some weight on it though they sometimes, depending on the quality steel, will bend on you a little bit or want to bend down. You drive a fence post behind it and then wire that to it. I mean, there's a piece there that'll last forever. Okay, that shouldn't go anywhere for a long time. That guy's going the same way. Here we have some targets. These are one inch thick. Uh, you can see that's one thick piece of steel. <laughs> uh, these we shoot at we we're just right at the limit here on that how far away they need to be because these are not going through and so you know they get the bullet pretty much pulverized itself but occasionally we could get something back so we're careful about shooting this uh this kind of stuff and you see the the craters and that's why we did that steel what we call it the steel eating video we've been shooting this kind of stuff and there's some more right there maybe you can zoom in on that we've been shooting forever for over 20 years and so it's common knowledge uh, to me what a 223 or a 308 or any kind of uh, high powered round like that will do to just plain old steel. I thought it'd be interesting to show, show you all on a video. We weren't really trying to get too scientific with it. But that's what it does. And that's why we have to be careful when studying these babies. You knock one things over, uh, make sure you grab it <laughs> by the back. 
because it creates a very sharp jagged edge. We try to keep that painted uh, so it's not rough on top of the sharp edge. Uh, there we go. But those are nice, they're really heavy, but we can shoot those with anything. Anything we want, high-priced rifle. We kind of sacrifice them. You see, you don't see those kinds of craters in anything else, these animals. All these steel targets are really expensive. And so uh, those we just sacrifice, they'll last forever like that. But I don't want the other animals uh, looking like that. We do sacrifice one occasionally and uh, just shoot at him for 15, 20 years, let it go. But uh, again, the old pigs are about, a, they're close to half inch thick. So uh, that's what you hear when you hear those things flop over, the big old piece of iron. Okay, a lot of odds and ends. We get a piece of steel that looks like it make a good target. We're liable to hang it up over here because we're far enough away. Now it doesn't really matter. This works the big dog up here at 80 yards. That baby, she's got a couple, couple of slug hits on him there. <laughs> that thing is heavy. That is heavy. Here we got pallets behind him. Uh, you know, dirt to, to catch misses. Uh, that tin I put up there to help catch. Uh, some of the splatter going out that way, whether it works or not, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's move on up. Now this is the, uh, that's 80 yards from the shooting table. We're moving up into an area here now. I think it's right about this tree. I think we're at about 100 right in here, as I recall. And now, if you look across the hill from this area at the other gong, which is the same size as that gong, it's almost well, a couple of feet in diameter, I think. But uh, that's the 230 yard gong. And I know from the camera over there back at the house, when uh, my son zooms in on it, when I'm shooting at it, it almost looks like it's, with the distortion, it looks like it's sitting over here somewhere just beyond this hill or something. And when you zoom in on the thing, but uh, it looks over there. It's another, it's another, uh, you know, hundred yards uh, from right here somewhere, and uh, so it's it's two thirty from back over at the house, and we've got the ram there behind it. It's another one of those we sacrifice. The sacrificial ram we shoot with anything. We don't shoot the gong with anything. We just uh, wanted to have two or three targets that we could shoot with a two two three if we wanted to, or a three oh eight, just whatever we happen to have out. And yeah, it tears it up over time, but it's okay. As long as we're not doing that to all the, all the targets. That's one reason you don't see steel targets, cool targets like this in a public range, because people get on, you know, wander in there with a high powered rifle and they start banging away at them and uh, tearing them up. So we shoot from here a good bit. We've done a few videos over here. We we'll move on down the hill. You see, we're trucking on down. Uh, got another uh, circular target down there in the hollow hanging. So we come over here and play quite a bit. Uh, just depends if we've got the windows open in the house or something. Just want to get away from the house and shoot some. We've got a you know buffalo and some things over there, some targets over there. Maybe give them a quick look at. This thing we shoot from that end or the other side of the hill. Doesn't matter. So that's an old popper. I, I've got several of those I had from back in the days when I used to uh, compete more in Ipsic matches and things and uh, actually knock them down, adjust them so they'd fall. Now they're all rusted up now, but I still throw some lead at them occasionally. And uh, we're going to go up to the wall real quick. Take them up to the dog. We're going to kind of go around here. This is the site of one of our famous pump and shoots using the skeet gun. Somebody was rolling pumpkins down that hill. You might recognize that. There's some of the remains over here. It's one of our biking trails up through there too. We have uh, mountain biking or trail biking trails cut through the woods. And this is pretty much the last of the targets as far as distance. 
be 30 yards for this point. And then the, uh, the ram, another big old fat gong. And then this ram up here, you can see he's full of uh, craters. We shoot him with anything we want to. And uh, he doesn't fall down or anything. Got him. I think both of his feet are, have been shot off. And uh, so we just plink at him with whatever we happen to want to have in our hands. 308, 45, 44 mag, you name it. And then the wall here is just here as a precaution uh, to maybe catch ricochets. We've got that made out of uh, mostly railroad timber. So uh, that was a chore to build. But uh, well, we've got a lot of land behind that, but you can never be too safe. You know, the more backstop you got, uh, the better off you are. Because it's amazing what a bullet will do. And in a lot of cases, a slower moving bullet will ricochet more often, I won't say further, but more often than maybe a 223 or a 308. Because when those things hit, they tend to tear something up, go in deep and everything. Whereas a 45 hard cast bullet or a 44 Magnum, just hard cast bullet, we can probably find some lying around here if the cameraman looks down at the ground here. They, uh, they tend to bounce around. They don't get torn up necessarily. There's a 45 Colt. You can see that. See, that's, that's been fired. And uh, you can see the rifling marks. If CSI guy could do wonders with that. There's a 4570. That's hit a rock or something, or it wouldn't be in that bad a shape. There's another one. But uh, they tend to, stay in, tend to stay intact, and so they could, uh, they'll bounce a ways. Occasionally, you'll hit one, hear one hit that wall. You know, if it bounces off some wood here or something like that. But anyway, those are the targets. That's the range. Uh, maybe, Mr. Cameraman, if you come back up here and maybe give a shot back at the at, at the uh, 230 yard mark from where we shoot from, gives another perspective too. You can see the front end of my red car over there maybe. It's a long way. <laughs> when you're over there shooting at this clear black dot, it does provide a pretty good sight picture if you can see the sight that far away. But uh, well, when you come over here and look back, it's like, whoa, way through the woods. So fun to do, though. Fun to do. So that's kind of the, the quick and dirty of the range, what the targets look like. Again, if you're setting up anything like this, you want the hardest steel you can afford. You want uh, flat, no edges around it anywhere for the lead to, as it shatters and comes out. Just imagine throwing a water balloon at a wall, you know, and... Uh, where that water goes just goes outward pretty much you don't want it hitting anything and coming back you know the lead uh thickness three eighths inch is just about perfect for most things and if you've got someone who does some welding you got some steel it's okay it'll hold up pretty well to pistol bullets 44 45 through 57 it does okay with that uh, if you don't have any edges on it uh, and you don't get too close to it generally you want to be 11 yards at least from steel i think that's the ipsc uh, standard pretty much ipsic uh, and just be careful and always have glasses and uh, if you're a young person you know just be careful you don't want to be shooting steel probably at all unless you're under the supervision of uh, some adult that you know knows exactly what's going on how the range is set up i think it's it's uh, not something you want to mess with unless you know what you're doing so that's the range and uh i can't think of any more lies to tell you so uh i'm glad you come out and visit us on this pretty sunny day uh, and uh, take a look at some of the steel that we sling at in our videos. So, y'all take care and come back and see us. It's Haycock signing off.